I think this revelation of exactly what you described of this feeling of there was only ever the one the one mind and it becomes all these different dissociated identities I would go so far as to say that's a really archetypal, archetypical or archetypal um, psychedelic experience um, that me and uh, I John Horgan who you're friends with spoke on the podcast about uh, how we both had the same same kind of experience and I've heard it from many people what's your take on what's going on in, in those experiences it, it is, is it a peak beyond and what, what mechanism would allow for that you're, you're posing the question to me okay yeah um, um, I will preamble that with a whole lot of disclaimers I think um, um, I think psychedelic gnosis is very suspicious. Um, I think the information in a psychedelic trip comes encapsulated in layer upon layer upon layer of noise. It's it's very very noisy, uh, very very hard to trust. Um, the trickster is loose in a psychedelic trip. If you come out of a psychedelic trip thinking, hey, man, you know what? I'm actually, I'm actually an alien from the Pleiades. I just dressed up this neat suit, but I come from a planet that's blue. And, uh, and it, the, the, the period of rotation uh, uh, on its axis is the same as the rotation around the sun. So it's always day on one side, always night on the other. And you have this family and it, it is hugely detailed detailed, elaborate stories that come from psychedelic noses. I think it's not reliable when taken literally. I think that's your mind expressing itself. That's what mind does. Mind fantasizes. I, 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 I like to say that uh, the prime directive of mind is to deceive itself. Because if it didn't, there would be no reality. Uh, there would be nothing. It needs to deceive itself at some level, in some layer of cognition, some deception needs to be happening for you to be able to say, oh, there is a world out there. Oh, shit, there is no world out there. It's all, in, it's all inside. It's all mind. Um, and I think in a, a psychedelic trip just exacerbates this prime directive of mind. It will do anything it can to deceive itself. That said, the one thing that is reliably derived from a psychedelic trip and I think it's very, it's not the details, it's not a particular narrative, it's not a particular model or scenario, all of that I think is highly suspicious. I'm not saying it's untrue, I'm just saying it's suspicious because mind deceive it, deceives itself. But there is one thing that's very reliable and it's behind all that, it, it's prior to all those models and narratives. And that is the reality of a psychedelic trip is indistinguishable from this reality. If anything, the psychedelic trip feels more real, more real than real. And the conclusion you can reliably take from this is, this too is a mental narrative. This, what's happening right now, this real world of ours is a trip as well. You can reliably conclude that, I think. I had already concluded that before I tripped for the first time. I was fortunate to have tripped for the first time as an adult. Uh, so I, I could make something out of it. Um, that conclusion you can take, it's all a play of mind uh, and mind deceiving itself in the trip and right here too. Everything else I think is suspicious. Everything else should be, should be taken with a whole bag of salt, not a grain, a whole bag of salt. Any detailed, elaborate, particular narrative about what's going on, where we came from and where you're going, what's actually happening behind the curtains, highly unreliable. A lot of noise, a lot of idiosyncratic personal stuff motivating that behind that, but that it is all mental, the trip and this, oh, you bet. That's really interesting because, uh, yeah, I would say the, the insight that um, reality is fundamentally unitive and the kind of revelation that people can have that it is one cosmic consciousness that becomes all these dissociated identities, um, they're, so, um, they're so common and they both fit with your worldview. It's interesting that, uh, you know, I, I almost feel like I don't want to dismiss, like the unitive thing totally fits with my worldview. Oh, um, my but I almost I don't want to dismiss them just to, you know, out of hand. Yeah, I didn't express myself correctly. I don't dismiss that. I think that's the reliable part, that this is all in mind and it's one mind. This is reliable yeah. because this doesn't have a particular elaborate narrative about, you know, 
aliens and fairies and I don't know how many dimensions. And I, I know people who have these elaborate stories. I have a friend who, 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 who is very mature and, uh, and he doesn't take any of that literally, but he shares with me. Uh, he, he takes psychedelics for, for um, um, cluster um, migraines, cluster headaches. I don't know what, it's worse than headaches, migraines. Yeah. Yeah, it's like extreme migraine. Um, it, it's, it's, it can floor you for a week and it can destroy your life. Um, and the medicines are almost worse than the thing in it, than the, than, 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 than condition. Uh, so he takes regularly uh, psilocybin because it gives relief. It's the only thing that gives relief without side effects, with, without all the other crap. Um, and, and he tells me the stories and every time there is a story and I, I, I had these experiences as well. Sometimes you think, oh, I'm in a Borg cube. I visited a Borg cube, a multi-dimensional Borg cube with these colors. Or he talks about uh, once he talked about um, a toffee uh, machine. You know toffee, the caramel-like mm -hmm. thing, and there's a machine that sort of rolls that and stretches yeah. and rolls and stretches. And he said, "I was in that. I was the toffee. I was being rolled and stretched." Uh, if you come back and say that's literally what's happening, I was in a toffee machine and I was toffee. Then I think you're you're making too much or too little of a psychedelic trip. It's deeper than that. The, to really go in, you have to punch through all these layers of deceptive narratives. You have to keep on going, keep on going. And then you get to a place which Buddhists call the void. Um, Terrence McKenna called, what did he call it? What is beyond the chrysanthemum, he said. Uh, well, no, 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 beyond the chrysanthemum are the, the the machine elves, but you have to go beyond the, the howling Tao he used to speak about as well. Yeah, I forgot. Uh, but in, uh, my McKenna phase passed a few years ago, so uh, my memory is <laughs> failing me now. But uh, beyond all that, there is a place where uh, your personal identity ceases, the fireworks cease, everything settles, everything becomes calm, time and space implode, uh, and you realize there is only one, only one thing going on it's only and it's me and it's you and it's everybody else but that's the only thing going on everything else is a story a narrative uh, an imagination and including this i think yeah i totally agree with that description i think i think that can um you can have multiple metaphysics that fit with that that same insight of just whatever exists is this stuff of existence and that's what matters right 